and welcoming you to the Don Lane Show, seen right throughout Australia on the National Line Network and Associate Stations. Tonight, Don's special guest is Kurt Douglas. And now, here's Don. Very nice. How are you? Okay, hi. Hi. <laughs> You're not going to say anything about the haircut. It looks, it looks so, so yucky. No. <laughs> it looks beautiful, Don. You look, you look 18 again. I don't. Yeah. 18 stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't worry about it till some guy called me Bullethead back there. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bullethead. Yeah, thank you very much. It's lovely. Anyway, anyway, hello. How are you? Welcome to the Don Lane Show, live from Richmond, where today a local man made the Guinness Book of Records by eating an entire motorcycle. <laughs> and we were going to have him in here on the show with us tonight, but his wife's still got him at home trying to kickstart him. <laughs> <laughs> This is the show that gives you names. Boy, don't we give you names? How about this? In just one week, Olivia Newton-John, John Travolta, and Reno the Butcher. <laughs> All in one week. Incredible. And of course, uh, before we go any further, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the news. Uh, if you haven't heard it already, this is true. Our very own Bertram has been named Victoria's Father of the Year for 1980. Thank you, Don. Thank you. <laughs> One time. And then... There he is, folks. A living testimonial for vitamin E. <laughs> was, it a, was it a close vote? Oh, very close. Yeah? Between me and Frank Thring. Yeah. <laughs> Who won? I, I, I scrapped in by a point. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> nice feeling? Oh, magnificent. Who is it awards it anyway? That's the... Sorry? Who, who awards it? Uh, it's the, the Father's Day Council. And uh, each year they nominate somebody as, as Father of the Year. And yeah. I follow on from some great men, people like uh, Bob Hawke and oh. the late uh, Lord Casey, uh, who was Governor General, of course, and some magnificent people. Uh, slight dip this year, of course, but of course, <laughs> yeah. I'll think about next year. I know you very well, and I know this came as a complete surprise, this thing. Uh, well, it's, you know, it's the sort of thing that you don't really uh, attain to. Everybody who wins it invariably says, of course, there are thousands of men who should have the award. It just happens that somebody like myself, uh, you know, is in the public view. And I have no doubt there are, you know, a million better fathers uh, than I in Australia. But whilst I'm here, I would like to mention to you, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and the uh, <laughs> country at large, and also to America. Uh, <laughs> I would like to know what Matthew, your son, has. To, does he realize that you are the father of years? He think you're the same old guy that comes in and out he, of the door? Strange to say. <laughs> I want to answer your second I'd question. like to see you in the morning when you need a shave and the shorts are on a little torn and you're wearing the slippers and <laughs> you're the father of the year. <laughs> you know what he thinks I've done? He thinks I've become king of Moomba again. <laughs> oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Which is good. And he wants to ride on a float. Yeah. Right. Patty is thrilled. Oh, I think she is. I can find her. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, let me tell you about good guests for the show tonight. By satellite from Hollywood, one of the motion picture world's greats, Kirk Douglas, is going to join us. Okay. And, uh, and uh, our, our expert and our friend, Dr. David Smith, will be here to talk us about the mysterious Amazon and uh, his travels there, and we'll find out about the, uh, the fearsome piranha. You know those fish that are supposed to devour people in about 20 seconds or something? We've got a couple of samples here for you as well. Mm. Anyway, and Bert has some surprises for us, uh, electronic surprises. He'll probably be surprised to Bert as well. And uh, our very special guest, here in person, 
the newest star on the show business horizon. Direct from Don's Wheel. <laughs> Reno the Butcher. <laughs> and, uh, and live in the studio, right before your eyes, Reno's gonna do what he does best, cut up his meat. <laughs> Allison Durbin uh, sings for us, and I've got a butte song for you later, too. It's really a nice one. Anyway, we've got a fellow back there by the name of Chuck McKinney. You may not know him, but uh, he's been on the show before. Does a great job. He's back there with the ballet. It's a really cute number, too. It's called Love the One You're With. Okay, put your hands together, and we got a good one for you tonight. Here you go. Right. Concentration just slips away Because your baby is so far away There's a rose to the mystic love And the eagle flies with the love And if you can't be with the one you love Love the one you with, love the one you with Don't be Just waiting for something to do But there's a rose in a fifty glove And the eagle flies with the sun And if you can't be with the one you love Love the one you with, love the one you with Let me test you uh, for just a moment. Imagine you were the captain of the world's largest and most powerful nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, the formidable USS Nimitz. And during routine maneuvers off Hawaii, you suddenly encounter a baffling storm. Not just a storm, but like nothing you've ever experienced. And then just as suddenly as it comes, the storm is gone. And as if, uh, just as if nothing had happened. Yet for some inexplicable reason, all radio communications suggest the year is not 1980, but 1941. December 6th, 1941, in fact, the day before the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and plunged the United States into World War II. But you know that's not possible. You can't go back in history. Or can you? Well, that's exactly the situation Kirk Douglas finds himself in. In his fascinating new movie, The Final Countdown, as captain of the Nimitz, he holds the fate of the world in his hands. 
Uh, with one order to attack, he has enough firepower to destroy the Japanese fleet and prevent Pearl Harbor from ever happening. But what does that do to history and to his own existence? How can he fight a battle that occurred before most of his crew was even born? As I said, The Final Countdown really is a fascinating and thought-provoking movie, and we're pleased to welcome once again, and wouldn't this be a nice habit to get into, via satellite from Hollywood, the star of the film, and the man with all those decisions to make, ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Douglas, here. here. I, uh, uh, thank you, go. thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Nice Don, I, I must say, listening to you, it sounds like a terrific picture. I think I'm running right out tonight and go and watch it. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like <laughs> it would be a good idea. Hey, welcome once again. Uh, good to talk to you again, Don. Oh, it's a pleasure. And uh, we'll talk about you coming out here soon in just a minute, too. But first, let me talk to you about this movie. Uh, you start, this movie started more arguments than I've never ever been involved in in my life. After we finished watching it, everybody sat up till about 5 in the morning discussing the... The, uh, the different ways it could have gone. Uh, a brilliant premise. Who came up with this uh, idea in the first place? Well, I got a dumb... I got four kids. Yeah. But my, <laughs> my, one, of my, one of my dumb kids, Peter, came up with this idea. And of course, after doing 65 pictures, Don, I said to him, Peter, don't be silly. How can you make this movie? You can't make the movie because you need an aircraft carrier. Right. It was impossible to make the movie. But being a dumb young kid, he went to Washington, went to the Pentagon, started with an ensign, went up to a captain, went up to the admirals, and the next thing he came back, he says, Dad, I got an aircraft carrier. I've got the USS Nimitz, which is the most, the largest nuclear-powered aircraft carrier in the world. Of course, at first, I really didn't believe him. <laughs> but really, Peter put the story together and got the aircraft carrier, and it really... I guess that's one of the, the fun of making movies, that each movie takes you into a whole new environment. Mm. And making the final countdown and living aboard a, a large aircraft carrier for about 12 weeks is very, really a very exciting experience. And it really was fun making the movies. And, of course, it was a lot of fun. I finally got a chance to be catapulted off the aircraft carrier and make one of those landings. Ah, uh, yeah. And, that's the, and, you know, Don, that's the only time that I thought that aircraft carrier was, was not quite as large. When you're up in a jet plane, way up about to make a landing, suddenly that aircraft carrier looks awfully small. I was, uh, we recently, had, uh, a couple of years back, we did a show off the <coughs> aircraft carrier here, and I landed in a helicopter. And even in a helicopter, it looked like we were going on a postage stamp. Uh, I understand, yeah. though, that the... Um, uh, the armament of that aircraft carrier, the Nimitz, is absolutely astounding. Yeah, it is. It's, it's really overpowering. I mean, I think it's... Uh, as a matter of fact, no matter what you see of it, it's nothing like when you are there actually, uh, you know, walking up that gangplank and going up the ladders. It's about 25, 30 stories high. It's, mm -hmm. it's, really, it's really an exciting experience. And uh, Peter did it. So all I've got to do now, Don, is sort of be nice to Peter and Michael and Joel and Eric. And they'll keep... <laughs> They'll keep the old man working for a while. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> the, uh, the, there was enough firepower on that aircraft carrier, is that true, that could have wiped out that entire Japanese fleet in 1941, and uh, the aircraft as well, everything. Oh, yes. They could have done that in about a half an hour. Mm. Yeah. Well, just to show people uh, what it is we're talking about, uh, we just want to show you a little scene from the motion picture. Oh, in this uh, scene, um, uh, I, I have to sort of set it up for you. Uh, two Japanese fighter planes are scouting. Uh, it's 1941, don't forget, and they're scouting, and they sink a yacht with some Americans on it, and the captain of the ship... Two Japanese zeros. Uh, two Japanese zeros, and the captain yeah. finally decides... He keeps telling his fighters, his jet fighters, not to do anything, and finally he can't hold off anymore, and he tells them to attack. Have a look at this. Here, you'll see.
charge of a rescue team. Now keep the survivors isolated. Crazy situation. Yes, you know what I want. I understand. Dan, keep the fighters airborne to cover the rescue. Aye, aye, Skip. Now track and report all movements from the Japanese task force. Aye, aye. You still think it's a dream? It's a nightmare. Oh, yeah. But uh, as you say, you say in that part there, a nightmare, it would be. Uh, have you ever sat down and thought, Kirk, uh, would you real life decisions have been the same? I don't want you to give away the ending in the picture, but I mean, would you, do you think that your real life decision would have been the same as your decision in the picture? Well, as you said before, you know, when you start discussing the, the, the ramifications of the, of the final countdown, you know, it, it, you, you never come to an end. It goes on, you know, it's sort of endless. Mm. Uh, and, and I thought a lot about you, what your question, what would my actual decision have been had I been in that situation? Mm. And, uh, of course, perhaps it's hindsight. I think I possibly would have made the same decision. Yeah. But, but it's really hard to say. You don't know how much of it is being conditioned by all the factors that you knew. But uh, it, it is a kind of a mind-blowing uh, yeah. concept to deal with. It certainly was. A heck of an experience to see it, too. Okay, let's get to the children now. Now, I want to discuss your sons and this, this uh, Hollywood takeover of the motion picture industry here that's going on with the Douglas family. There is, there is of course, Michael. Yes. Right. Now. Well, Michael, Michael's over the hill. Yeah. You know, he's, uh, of course, he did one for <laughs> the cuckoo's nest and China Syndrome and yeah, mediocre. Just, finished a picture, just finished a picture with Jill Clayburgh. Now, Michael's a... Uh, a real, really a, a talented kid, and what I admire most about Michael is not so much the tremendous success that he's had, Don, but what I admire most is how he handles that success. I really think that that, to me, is uh, the thing that I admire most. Because out here, you know, in this, uh, you know, success can be so tremendous, and failure can be so tremendous, and you have to be able to deal with both of them, and sometimes success is more difficult to deal with than failure. And uh, Michael, I think, is capable of handling both of them. Now, this, uh, this young man, Peter, well, we have a shot here of you and Peter together. There he is. He's on the right here. Um, uh, this his is his first he, is he venture. Has he got a beard in there? No, he doesn't. No. Uh, uh, no beard. He's, he's, he's wearing he, a beard. You both have the same nose, unfortunately. Um, well, we <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Peter, P Peter usually wears a beard because he wants to look older. When he went to Washington uh, to get the aircraft carrier, he was 20, uh, just turned 23, and he told him at the Pentagon that he was 26. Right. <laughs> he thought that would make a big difference. He said, Dad, you know, if I'm 23, nobody paying attention to me, but I'll be, if I'm 26, they'll pay, pay some attention to me. So yeah. while we're ma shooting the picture at Norfolk, my wife came down to visit me and to celebrate our 25th Wedding anniversary. <laughs> All right. He's yeah. telling everybody he's 26. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Peter, I said, Peter w w what do you want to do? I said, Peter, I'll play it the, w however you want it. You can be a love child. You can be anything. <laughs> oh, he said, Dad, forget it. <laughs> if you want to be a producer, you have to carry the names that go with it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Joel and Eric, the other two now, what do they do? Joel, uh, Joel is in Alabama right now doing a, putting together a movie. Uh, he's had a lot of problems. He's trying to get it. You know, we had a, a strike going on out here. Yeah. And he's, he's got quite a few problems because it's a picture with snakes. And since the picture was delayed, his, uh, you know, he's been having his, his snakes keep getting st sick. He's got about uh, <laughs> two dozen cobras. He's got two dozen cobras. So every time I talk to him on the phone, all I hear about is the health of his snakes. That's the thing that's <laughs> worrying him right now. So I hope that... Uh, I hope that Joel's snakes are in good health and he gets the picture made. Yeah, I certainly hope so as well. And Eric is studying to be an actor. That's right. Eric just left 
Uh, Eric's a very independent fellow. He's the youngest in my family. He's 22. And he just left two days ago. He's on his way back to London, uh, where he, he spent a year last year. And he's now going to spend one more year uh, studying to be an actor. Frankly, I, I suggest that he go to Australia, because I, it seems to me that the whole thrust of filmmaking and acting and directing seems to be emanating from Australia right now. We're quite excited by the uh, it, work that's being done in Australia. It certainly is. You're coming here for the movie awards. At long last, your last time we that's talked right. to you, you said you're breaking your neck to get to Australia, and at long last, you're coming. Yeah, you know, Don, as, I, as we talked last time, I, I, it seems to me for about eight years I've been planning to get to Australia, and always something happened to prevent me from getting there. So I'm really very excited about uh, getting down to Australia. I'll be there, I think, about the 15th or 16th of September. Yeah. I hope I'll be able to stay there for at least a week and get a chance to see the country and meet some of the people. I'm very excited about it. Well, if it can be arranged at all, as you know, I said it the last time, I would dearly love you to come into the studio and meet the live audience and, and say hello to them. You'd have a heck of a time. I can yes. promise you the best. And if there's ever anything you need, uh, we're, we're at your disposal. I'll be calling Melbourne when I'm in trouble, Don. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for taking the time now, Kirk. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you when you're here. Whether you come on the show or not, it'll be nice to look at you eye to eye. Don, thank you very much, and I look forward to getting to Australia, and I hope we'll have a chance to talk together in person. We will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kirk Douglas, ladies and gentlemen. We, uh, a little apologies there for that sound, but those are the kind of things that uh, you have to, that you're confronted with when you do do satellite interviews, okay? Uh, we're going to take a commercial break. Thanks once again to Kirk Douglas. We will be back, and Bert's got a big surprise for us, uh, something mechanical and electronic. And <laughs> you know, Bert. <laughs> we'll be back. Hang in there. Thank you very much, and welcome back. Over the years, Bert has amazed us with his mechanical knowledge and dexterity. Well, tonight could be the culmination of all his mechanical dreams. He's going to show us how to operate radio-controlled model cars and how to build them, uh, sort of. And I can't wait to see it. Here's Bert. All right? Yes. Yeah. You know, Mr. Lyle, don't you? I'm music director. How you doing, Mr. Lyle? Mr. Lyle, Mr. Main. Very nice to meet you. Nice to see you in a mechanical mode as opposed to a musical one. These are Tamiya I radio control... No, don't you... No, you'll oh, break it. You'll oh, bust it. You'll ruin sorry. everything. Sorry, it's just... Short just... here. These are Tamiya <laughs> radio control model cars. You buy kits, Don, and the idea is you, you build them yourself. Now, you've got down there a like VW. Those. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. We've got a VW, and we've got a, uh, another type, and we've also got, uh, got a, a Jeep. That's a racing car, too. Yeah, racing car in the yeah. center. And they, look, they're one-tenth scale models. They're oil-filled shock absorbers, pneumatic tires, seal electronics, and gearbox. Yeah. Got the whole box and dice. And this weekend, uh, the, the Sydney Radio Electric Car Club holding the first ever Australian National Championships as part of the, uh, of the 1980 Sydney International Motor Show. Yeah. You thrilled? Thought yes, you I am. Yeah. I'm more, I'm more worried about how do you work these controls. <laughs> it, it's, it's on at the Sydney showgrounds, and uh, it should be a magnificent time. And Tamiya are donating uh, the major... Uh, Tamiya are donating, donating the... Uh, one started without... Something went touch. off. I'm with, getting out of here. Well, so am I. Tamiya are donating major prizes of uh, a trip for two to Japan. Okay? And I thought it might be a nice idea, too, at the, at the show, for one of the cars to travel in uh, the Don Lane Show colours. So they've agreed to Actually compete? Yeah. You're going to do that? Yeah. Fantastic. Which is nice. We'll have a now, go. Okay, now you've now. got your controls there. What have you got? You've got the... Uh, Elf. The Elf, which is in the center. What have you got? You've got the VW. That, that's mine, the VW. You will win, and um, you will enjoy it. <laughs> what, how does it work? Well, let's just explain in close-up. I'll show you my control panel. This is for the, uh, this is for the Jeep. Now, there, that... You watch, watch me, and also watch the car, if you can. You watch this. So you go up. You see, now that's forward. This is reverse. This is... Turn. This is turn. Well, hang on a sec. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. 
Now, the idea now, I'll just, I'll put it back as fast as I can. <laughs> And we'll have a little race around the studio. Well, hang on. Can I just? Can we just try it for a minute sure. first? Sure. So what? This one works the wheels. Oh, I see. The that, wheels. The yeah, wheels, wheels there. Yeah. Right. And don't don't touch the thing yet. You Stop. try your wheels. See so your, so your wheels are okay. Mm, right. And now you can make it start off. And make it go yeah. forward. I got. It. Oh, I see. Right. I might mention to you, Graham, you've got a very fast one, so be careful. I'll see he does. The touch is uh, is very important. <laughs> yeah, fine. Now you try the sand. Now try and go over the jump. Hang on, how do you move it back? Oh, you just put it in reverse. Yes. Whoop. Hey. Look, I'll give you a demonstration with mine. This might be the best idea for both of you guys. Just hang on one sec. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, now I've shown you what wanna, you, what wanna, you shouldn't do. When I grow do. up, I want to learn to handle it just like you do. Yeah, okay, well, now I just gave an example of what you shouldn't do. Right. Now, this is how you actually should... I know, wait a minute, how do I do this? Hold on. Hold on, we got to get to the starting line right here somehow. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Mine's gone neurotic. <laughs> oh, here comes Graham. Look at Graham. Look at Graham. Stop at the line, Graham. There's a smarty at every party, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll go up to the line and wait for yeah, you. Yeah, right. I'll wait for you a second. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Stop it. Turn it off. Touching it, though. Okay. Back to the line. Back to the line. Here we go. Okay. Get yours back to the line. There we go. Whoop. No, wait a minute. Just on the line. That's it. <laughs> 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 okay. right, here we go. Which side do you want me on? In the middle. Oh. <laughs> wait. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Just bring it back. Uh, you get it, no one touch it. I'm not touching it. Put it down. And we'll start. Okay. okay. Shh. 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 Someone got a gun? <laughs> and not one of them's on the track. Do you believe this? <laughs> Hang on. I've had enough of this. Have you? Yeah. Well, you can take this. Oh, Here we geez. go. Right away. What the heck? Look out! <laughs> <laughs> now, this is on next Saturday at the, at the show in Sydney. It should be a fantastic time, and you'll see one of the cars actually racing for the, uh, the Don Lange... Don Lynch. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Wait a minute. Wait on. There are three, con three controls here and four are going. Oh. Think we've had enough? Yeah. Hang on. One second. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. That's it. Sorry about that. We've had enough. I think they're terrific, and they'll be racing in our colours up in Sydney, will they? Indeed, yep, on, on Saturday. They will. If you're interested in this kind of thing, you can find out about it at your, at your shops. Oh, my God, look at this. Yes. You're serious, Lyle, aren't you? You are, you are a wartime person. <laughs> no. 
Anyway, thank us. Uh, thank you very much for the loan of these. Thank Bertram for showing them to us. We'll be right back in just a minute. We got Reno the Butcher coming up. And Alice and Gilbert. just been told that Kirk Douglas will be able to come in live on Thursday, September the 18th when he comes in here, which is great news for us. What a lineup we've got that night. I know it's a bit far off, but it's lovely to know. Boz Skaggs in here performing in live, Peter Allen in here performing in live, and Kirk Douglas all on the same show. That's on the 18th. And that's just one of the many great shows that we've got coming up in the next few months. You'll be meeting some of the biggest names in show business, I promise you, okay? Uh, while I've got a chance, uh, this is just for our people up north. Now, while I've got the chance, I'd like to remind all our Wollongong viewers about Channel 4's telethon this weekend in aid of the Royal Alexandra Hospital for Children and the Spastic Center of New South Wales. It starts at 6.30 this Saturday night, and it goes through to 6 p.m. on Sunday. It's really a worthwhile event. They need your help, so support them, will you? There's also a telethon going on for the deaf here in Channel 10 this weekend. Is that not right? I don't know when that starts. I haven't got the information on it, but anything that's going to help people... Uh, we always back up. It doesn't matter what network you're on when it's for a good cause, does it? So it's uh, Channel 10's telethon this weekend. Jimmy Hannon is hosting that one. So uh, your Jimmy Hannon fans will be able to see Jim uh, really go to work there. Uh, Some Girls was a really racy hit for the English pop group. Ra uh, pop <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, just for America. They never see fluffs. <laughs> This will be like an edit now. See, they'll take this out of the program and put it in just for America. And they'll say, my God, isn't he glib? He never makes an error. <laughs> Pause. Some Girls was a really racy hit for the English pop group Racy. To sing it for us now, a really racy lady. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. Uh, the lovely Alison Durbin. Here's Alison and Some Girls. Come on. Here we go.
that's a beautiful lady and a good singer too. That last album that she did went platinum, actually. A uh, big record seller, that lady. Um, I'd like to remind you about uh, September the 12th and the 13th at the Comedy Theater down here in Melbourne. Uh, I'll be working in concert, and um, the tickets have been moving very fast. Uh, it's true, and if you want to get in, you better. It's two weeks away now, and they've really been moving, so if you do want to come, I'd advise that you buy them now early as possible, okay? Uh, as you know, in our wheel segment, anything can happen, particularly when Bird is, one, is in one of his... Uh, uh, devilish moods, for lack of a better word. However, it's totally unexpected when one of the contestants provides the surprises. Now, this happened recently when a man by the name of Reno Vedato appeared. And uh, his, uh, his natural wit and his charm gave us all a ton of laughs, and uh, he's really a likable character. And uh, the reaction from all of you out there was overwhelming. Bring Reno back, was the cry. So, uh, tonight, we have. And he's going to show us a few things about his favorite subject, Meet. He is the butcher, so would you please welcome Reno the Butcher. Yeah, we got you. How are you? Good. All right. You don't get, you get nervous at these things? Not a bit. You don't have to get yeah. nervous. No, not to worry. It's okay. I just don't, I want you to be relaxed, so we put you around meat, make you feel comfortable. If I'm not relaxed, I cut my hands. So Do you? I yes. to be relaxed. Okay. That's nice. Like, what about at the butcher shop? A lot of people... Uh, Lots say, of people. They see you on the show? Lots of people. Yeah? They're all happy. Yeah, they're Asking happy. questions, you know, discount? No way. No. So... <laughs> <laughs> Max is just happy. <laughs> okay. Do they talk about you being on the show? I mean, do they think you're yes, a stunner? Yes, yes, yes. They'd be happy. What, do you go back? Do you go back? How uh, much they pay you? How it's done? How this? How that? Said, no way. No. Without, no way. No secret. You don't tell them that we go out and date and everything. And no, 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 no. I don't tell even about... Uh, no, but no, no, you don't. Right. <laughs> okay, now what have we got here? We got a side of lamb. A side of lamb. Okay. Cheapest thing to buy these days. It is? Proper time. The best thing? Best things. Right, okay. Why is it? Because all the spring lambs... Well, the spring lambs, quality is good. Price is cheap, easy to cut. You get a lot of good things out of it. You don't waste a thing. You don't waste anything? Nothing. Oh, you show me, what do you get out of a, out of a side of lamb? Well, a side of lamb, you get a leg. That's Big a leg. family, you cut a bit longer. Right. Small family, cut in two. Right. Use it twice. Right. You get the chops, <laughs> the cut, <laughs> bit for the stew, the shank for the soup, the neck for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Jack O'Leary used to say he had a very poor family, and his mother used to send him to the butcher for a sheep's head. Then he used to say, give me a sheep's head, and Mom says, leave the legs on it. <laughs> oh, so you cut that. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> well, cut it up for me. Show me how it works. Okay. Right. Turn around first. Okay. Now, as you said, this is the leg, okay? Right. Yeah. We just cut it here. What is the chop out? The left and on the back. Right. Okay. And That's, the leg, the, That's, That's the, the leg of the leg. That's the leg of the You roast that, you cook You're it, right. put it in a pan. If right. you can have two things out of it. Right. So you can just cut this one if you don't waste it. Just cut it here, so you can use it better, especially small pan, you know. Those uh, little ovens, you can't use them all. So you take just the meat out of the shank, oh, just I pop see. around, get to the doggy, make him happy. Right. Up with him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can throw a bit of fat to make it a bit of soup. Right. How much fat are you supposed to have uh, the butcher trim off the meat? Uh... All depends if the butcher is successful or not. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed you before on the price. He yeah. does everything for you. Yeah. But if he doesn't, sorry, man, that's the way he was born, that's the way you're going to get it. <laughs> okay. okay. So, <laughs> on right. the other part. Right, now what else is left here? Oh, you got a kidney. Kidney, right, that's yeah, that's good, that's fair. Beautiful. Yeah. I don't like it, but still beautiful. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> a fat, that's good for a fat man. So, you get something out of it, too. What do you do with that? Well, they make soap, cream, hairsprays. Oh, so you gather yeah. all that up and you sell that? Yes, they come and pick it up. They come pick it up? Of course. You and don't you waste that thing. Of course. <laughs> Once a month. Why? Okay. Okay. Still, you don't waste that. Right. Then you got, as I said, the four quarter. Usually we cut a five ribs. So it's pretty easy to cut. You get a nice roast out of it. Or you can have, if you want as well, barbecue shops. You can have the shank. Uh -huh. There we go. Use the saw here. Oh. Easy. This, Careful. Is the, this is the big time with the saw. Easy job. Easy. <laughs> you know what? Look, how easy it is. So you cut one chop here, you use the sink. You can use the two for the stew. It's you can it. use what for the, the stew? The two chops here for the stew. The two, the two, the two chops, chops for the stew. Nobody right. likes them, I don't know why. Oh. Everybody <laughs> wants this one. And then you can use this part. Do people really know the difference when they come in? 
Do people say to you, I, I don't want the chops from that part, I want them from this part? They do. I don't know if they know the difference, but I don't want them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have the barbecue chops out of here. Right. It's very easy. You know why I didn't bring the chopper in? Why you didn't what? Bring the chopper, the big knife. Oh, the big knife, yeah. I right. felt sorry for the people who lose you the block. Oh, so this if I'm going to bring it here, how much money got to cost the channel, sir? No chopper. Just a little demonstration. You bring the chopper, I see. Not a chopper. Okay, well, we don't have to chop it up. No, no, no. no. So how many little... chops you got? One, two, three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, seven, eight. You can slug this one in just underneath, you know? Uh, <laughs> you, know <laughs> you shouldn't, but you never know. Right, I got you. So okay. the best way... Well, what about this end? What happens there? The dog. The dog? I forgot the dog. Oh, I didn't forget my dog. No, or you can have a soup with it, but people these days get funny, you know? They just... Yeah, fat, bad by my liver, bad by my cholesterol, so for the dog. What do you got to buy for fat? They don't want it. <laughs> so they got for the four quarter. Okay, we got that. Now, what is here? This one is the flat. You cut it off, and you can use it for many things. Uh -huh. A little stewed together with the part that you got off there. Right. In this side here. You ever cut yourself? <laughs> you got to be joking. You've got 75 stitches on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> This one you can use as a cutlet. You know the one with the little bone? I'll show you. Oh, the cutlets. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I know. You or you can have the rake of roast, a little rake, instead of cutting the cutlets. Yeah. You're using just as a rake. As a what? A rack. A rack. A rack. A rack. I got that. I'll interpret for you, too. <laughs> but between an Italian and American, doesn't come out much, you know? <laughs> See, if you go the other side of the lamb, yeah. which is exactly the same. Right. Okay? You can have it made a crayon roast. The crown roast. The crown I know roast. what that is. Yeah, that's lovely. The crown roast. The sure. Crown roast. Yeah. Or you, you can move the two racks and put it together like this. Yeah. It looks marvelous. A bit of black currant jelly, a bit of honey, rosemary, salt, pepper, and out the window. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this left? This is the middle line. Everybody mm -hmm. wants this part. They forget about that, they forget about everything, but they want this part. They all want that. All the middle this. line. Now you know. You go to the, the butcher, you tell them you want the, the middle best. line. Right. Who are the worst kind of customers? The one who expects to know more than a butcher. <laughs> That's the worst one. How long did you go to school for this? Oh, I've never been to school. No? Uh, I learned kick here and a kick there and a work the other side. I had to learn. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fair enough. No school. And these are the best chops. These, these. are the best chops. Right. See? As you see. Yeah, those that's are all the best the... chops. Yeah. No that's... waste whatsoever. No. That's for the grilling. And it's the same. The grilling, frying, everything is good. Right. Of course, nobody wants this part. They should be cut here. Yeah. And the Mother Nature should have been fantastically against the butchers. Yeah. Because they don't want the flap. They don't want anything. Right. How do you expect me to run? <laughs> so you just cut. You get about seven or eight middle line out of it. Right. All depends on the pocket supply. Right. So that's all what he's in the lamb. Okay. I think that's plenty. Look at what we got out of here. I think that's fantastic. What about the sausages? The sausages, the mystery bags, as they call them. <laughs> <laughs> These are the best. They're beautiful. You make those? I never touch them. <laughs> <laughs> Reno the butcher. He'll be back to do more for us on another show. Believe me. He'll be back taking this for the tell us about for us. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's time once again for you to meet our magnificent male model, who is coming out here to show you the latest in uh, what uh, Paleco has to offer. Is he there? Here he is. This is our... <laughs> What's the shaving cream for? It goes with the outfit. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't exactly follow. What is I'm it? I'm modeling my Palaco shave coat. Uh-huh. I can see it's certainly a handsome coat. Very nice. Yeah, but wait till you see what's underneath. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Have a look at that. Look. What is that on your hip there? On what? your thigh? I have my secrets, you have yours. <laughs> I know you have a tattoo and I know exactly where it is. <laughs> you know, it's the name of fashion, Don, the reason I'm dressed like this this evening. Is that right? Could I have a drum roll, please, um, Graham? Come on. <clears throat> You're not going to open anything, are you? I'm going to open up the whole lot. Are you? Yes, and let the whole matter drop. All right. Okay? Yes. 
would like to say a thing of my image, no. think of my future, would you? <laughs> no, no worry. But I would think of your image and your future. It's all right with me. Think of your rating. Right. You wouldn't tell me to nick off, would you? No, I certainly uh, wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> they are sleep shots that you'll see there. Those are sleep shots. <laughs> five, five whistles and all from blokes. That's right. <laughs> Well, sleep shorts. I never heard about those. They're by Palaco, just part of the wonderful range of Palaco sleepwear, which also includes naughty night shirts. Naughty night shirts. And <laughs> permissive pajamas. Permissive pajamas. Anything else? And remember that Palaco sleepwear for men is the second nicest thing about going to bed. <laughs> what, uh, what's the first? Having the electric blanket on three. <laughs> <laughs> Palaco. Palaco. You got it. It is indeed a lovely. Hey, you can't open it, me? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our friend Dr. David Smith from the zoology department at Melbourne University came to visit us some months back to tell us about cane toads. He promised he'd come back and tell us about some of his findings and adventures when he explored and studied the Amazon River. And we're also going to find out about those voracious predators of the river, the, the piranha fish, the ones you always hear about that, that, uh, that eat everything that comes in the water. Anyway, we'll find out more about them. So welcome back. This is also another charmer, this guy. He's terrific. Dr. David Smith. Say hello to him. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think to start off with, what's a nice boy like you doing in the Amazon? What were you doing down there? That's a good question, yeah. I was really? having a good time, actually. Were you? Apart from anything else, yeah. We were down there uh, with a bunch of Canadian scientists for about a month studying fishes that breathe air. These fishes have got uh, sort of modified buoyancy devices that they actually breathe through. And we wanted to know how they did it and how they breathed and so on. I saw just the other night, <clears throat> saw somewhere, I saw, a, where did I see that on somebody's show, a fish in a tank with legs. Probably an axolotl, one of those little amphibians. With, yeah, it uh, says eventually it comes on land. But yeah, that's right. This is the kind of thing we were studying. And in fact, the results of the work that we were uh, involved in down there eventually wind up in a, a book like this. We, um, this is what you go and you study for to put out a journal, yeah, we, is that we put it? Out yeah, these I results in the journals like this, and it's kind of lying around in literature then for people to read and to, oh. uh, to use in the future. Fantastic. Do we have a map here somewhere? It's on the front. Where is it? Here. here. Yeah. I just like to sit, let people see where we're talking about and where you were here. Right? Yeah, I don't think anybody ever realizes. The extent of the Amazon River, I mean, just how big and how much of an area it covers of South America. Yeah, before we went there, we all sort of sat around reading books about the Amazon and trying to work out the statistics, and uh, you get a bit dazzled by the figures. They don't really mean very much. Uh, you know, it's the second longest river in the world, and it's got seven times the volume of the uh, Mississippi and mm. this kind of thing. It doesn't mean too much till you get there. When you get there, you discover that at the town we started work, at Manaus, which is uh, about here, it's about a thousand miles upstream from the mouth of the Amazon, the river there is uh, about two miles wide, 300 feet deep, and flows at about 10 knots. Wow. So, and that's how, do you, how do you get there? The, you, you get there by plane. We got there by plane, but ships what, can actually go. Or no, no, no. We just uh, flew into the airport at Manaus. Yeah. But actually, ships can go up the Amazon for about uh, oh over 2,000 miles, which is quite incredible. Ocean-going mm -hmm. liners can go up there. And in fact, it's an open uh, piece of water. Ships from any nationality can go up the Amazon and visit all the countries that the Amazon uh, goes through yeah. into Peru, for example, uh, with no customs problems, which is unusual. That's yeah, well, the, well, the, uh, but everybody along that river, that would be their lifeline, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, with the lifestyle much, that they live there. Very yeah. much so. You find that the rich part of the river, where there's a lot of uh, fish and so on, is uh, the natives there are very well uh, cared for. They're very healthy and so on. But further back into the jungle, uh, the wildlife has been taken over by. Uh, foresting programs and things like this oh, to quite right. a large degree and so they're much less uh, well nourished it's it's a bit of a problem but the people living on the river themselves are fairly fit and uh, and well cared for there's a lot of dangerous uh, yeah. animals and yeah. things in the, in the jungles there in fact uh, well we will talk to you about some of the the, uh, the more common ones that people would know about uh, mm. yeah well, actually I uh, went swimming in the Amazon uh, we, we all went swimming in the Amazon. It was really hot there. You know, it's about sort of 35 degrees and 99.9% .9 humidity. Oh, wow. So uh, just sort of walking around breaks you out in this incredible sweat. Yeah. Uh, that's a picture of me uh, jumping off the bow of the boat, actually. And uh, while you're falling, uh, it's a fairly high bow, and you've got a fair bit of time to fall. And you're sort of constantly wondering about these stories about piranhas and what you're jumping into yeah. when you're going to strike the water surface. Are they going to, are they going to do something? It's not you? just piranhas. There are all sorts of other animals there, too. The, uh, there are crocodiles, a type of crocodile, which are called a, a caiman. And it's actually uh, amazing. We were sitting out at, uh, around some of the pools at night, 
uh, just watching some of the fish and, and monitoring temperatures of water and things like this. Yeah. And you shine your torch around the water, around the edge of the pond, and uh, you see these little red eyes glowing in the dark. And of course, the distance between the eyes is a good guide to the size of the caiman that's out there looking at you. Mm. So some of them were that far eyes. apart, okay. yeah. <laughs> and you kind of you know, raised your feet up off the ground. <laughs> I hope they're not going to come too close to you. Tell him he can go where he wants. Yeah. They also say that there are a lot of. Now, this is. Uh, it may sound like a silly question, but it's not because I've heard people say that, that, they, that there are forms of animal life in those jungles that they feel they haven't even discovered yet. Uh, oh, yeah, that's true. Um, I guess every year there's probably uh, several hundred new species of animals discovered there. Yeah. We know very little about the animals that we can even list on our species lists. Uh, that's why we're there doing this sort of work, you know, to try and, uh, and document which animals are there, how they breed, um, what the pollution effects in the river are. Uh, having on, on the, uh, the fish and so on. All right, let's talk about, uh, I, wanna, I want you to come back another time and tell me about some of that animal life that's mm, down sure. there because I'd really like to do an extensive thing on that. I think that's interesting. Mm. But what about the piranha? Now let's, first of all, let's, uh, let's take a look at what we're talking about. Now these are, you're not allowed to have live piranha in, uh, in Victoria or in even Australia, in, in Australia, yeah, period. Yeah. Okay, what is the reason for that? Would they breed? Uh, well, can you imagine having the Moomba Water Ski Festival with piranha infested Yarra, you know? I mean, it just wouldn't go. Well, you wouldn't want to <laughs> lose, would you? You wouldn't want to fall off. Okay. Yeah. These are some piranha. Uh, this... That's what they look like. And here's another one here. These two large ones, um, that's about as big as they grow. They perhaps grow to a, a few inches bigger than that. They're pretty sizable fish. Mm. They school in schools of about, um, oh, up to 400, 500 fish at a time. So right. you can imagine all those little teeth. They, they've got this tremendous precluded lower jaw. They're sort of the frank thrings of the fishy world, you know. They, yeah, right. <laughs> Good to see you, darling, you know. <laughs> They're... Uh, well, really and, only, and only half as vicious. Right. Uh, um, yeah. would, uh, how many of these would, how long would it take a school of these, for instance, if a man did fall into the water? Uh, uh, they probably wouldn't take very long. I reckon they'd uh, take out the average person down to bones, sort of a bit like Reno with his knife. You know, they'd, uh, yeah. they'd take you back in a matter of two or three minutes, probably. Yeah. Uh, because they really get, uh, well, stuck in you. They, they, they really... Uh, but really but the, odd, the odd part of it is, though, that they don't, they don't really attack all the time. As no. people think they do. A number of people have gone to the Amazon trying to uh, get film of the uh, sort of feeding frenzy that they go into and so on and, and just trying to find out where they are and where they feed and are they really as dangerous as people believe. And it usually takes them quite a long time to even see them feeding. Mm. Uh, it seems to boil down to the fact that uh, on, on certain days the weather's right and the tide flows and things are right. And um, on those days then some triggering behaviour is released. Um, which we don't really understand yet, and that's when they go into this feeding frenzy. Now, you, as I said, when you're swimming in the river, you're very worried about the triggering factors and whether they're about to go into a feeding frenzy. Yeah. Um, is it seasonal, or is it kind of just happen at any time? We don't know. You don't we know? We don't know the answer yet. Yeah. Well, what do they live on in the meantime? Uh, they live on uh, their cousins. They're a group of just bony fishes like a lot of other fishes that people keep in aquaria. Yeah. Oh, that's a picture of uh, what happens when you're catching piranhas. and. Uh, you can see that uh, they actually eat each other if one of them's a bit wounded or, or a bit sluggish or something. They'll, they'll hop into that and, uh, and so take fairly sizable chunks out. Basically, they're cannibalistic, is what yeah, you're saying. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Silver shark aquariums, by the way, loaned us these. Uh, it was really nice of them because we were searching around trying to, uh, being naive like we are, we yeah. were searching around trying to find live ones and then we right. discovered you're not allowed to it's have any not. live ones. Yeah. yeah. We've got this little piranha up on the top of the tank here and. Uh, as I said, the big one is uh, not as common as these little ones. This is actually the most ferocious of the piranhas and the most aggressive one. I'll turn around so you can see his teeth mm. there. Yeah. And the teeth actually, as you can see, are little triangles and they uh, lock over each other as they close their mouth and kind of have a scissoring action which keeps them sharp. So they really are razor sharp the whole time. Uh, would they, uh, there seems to be this great fear about the piranha uh, in a country with a warm climate, I suppose. Uh, would they breed uh, um, very well? I reckon they'd breed extremely well in uh, anywhere north of Sydney. Yeah, so I, don't, I wouldn't like to see them introduced into Australia. I think it would change. Uh, well, I mean, we've got the problem of the European carp in Australia, and uh, yeah. we can't eradicate those now. Right. They were introduced for a supposedly sensible reason, which turned out to be uh, not so sensible. Right. Imagine if these things were loose in the, in the yeah. river systems. I can. I mean, well, just to give people an idea, this is sort of a dramatization more than it is uh, a reality. Uh, there's a motion picture out now that has Lee Majors in it, and this is just one particular scene. Uh, from this motion picture that's supposed to show this frenzied feeding thing and so forth. Have a look at this here. This is a...
When they invite you over to dinner, you're it, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, come back and talk to us some more about the Amazon. I'd, I'd really like to, and a lot of other things, David. Fine. Because you're welcome yeah. back here anytime. Thank Good. you very much. Thanks, okay, so. Dr. Yeah. Davis. Right, we'll be back. I've got a beautiful song for you. The wheel is coming up. We've got a lot more shows. Thank you. Thank you very much, and welcome back. The famous composer Victor Herbert once wrote in his musical Babes in Toyland, 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 little girl in boyland, once you pass its borders, you can ne'er return again. That's the sad part about age. There isn't any going back. Time is indestructible and keeps ticking away. Or when we're young, old age is something that happens to other people. A very wise man once said, that's the trouble with youth. It's wasted on the young. And as youths, uh, we all do it. We gaily flit from place to place and adventure to adventure, carrying with us an imaginary, uh, perpetually flowing fountain of youth that supposedly inoculates us against the ravages of time. But time is indestructible and keeps ticking away. Old people are other people, but they're slow. They're problems. They get in the way. They're too set in their ways. Pay them the more mind, leave them alone, and they'll leave you alone. Push them aside somewhere so that they won't bother us. Don't worry about how useful they'll be. Why should we show any responsibility? We're too busy, we've got our own lives to lead. They've already lived theirs. But time is indestructible and keeps ticking away. And with no warning at all, you suddenly realize that old people aren't just other people because as sure as the sun rises and sets, old age arrives and the best you can hope for is that the young ones will care more than you did will spend a little more time than you did and that they won't leave you with just reflections empty hours and memories so think about it because time is indestructible and keeps ticking away Far down in Dallas, an old man chimed in, and I thought he was out of his head. Just being a young man, well, I just laughed it off when I heard what that old man said. He said, I'll never again turn the young ladies' heads or go running off into the wind. I'm three quarters home from the start to the end, and I wish I was 18. I wish I was 18 again Go where I've never been But old folks and old oaks Standing tall just pretend I wish I was 18 Time turns the pages And life goes so fast And the years turn the black hair all gray I talk to some young folks They don't understand The words that the old man I wish I was 18 again Going where I've never been But old folks and old oaks standing tall Just pretend I wish I was 18 again 
wish I was 18 again. I wish I was 18. On Don's wheel tonight, you could win this exciting new Toyota Corona CS manual sedan, valued at around $7,377 on the road. Your new Toyota comes to you with the confidence of Pitstop Motors of South Yarra, St Kilda and Ilsenwick, one of Australia's leading Toyota dealers. And Pitstop Motors want your business. And this magnificent Kimball home piano, valued at $1,895. Kimball is available from Paul Haywood pianos and organs of High Point, Dandenong, and now at Mount Gravatt, Brisbane. And the TAA Dunk Island Holiday for Two, where for one week you'll enjoy relaxing amid this lush tropical hideaway, and you'll fly there and back with TAA the friendly way. And this magnificent Burgess dining setting, comprising extension table and six upholstered chairs from the Mayfair range. So when you think furniture, think Burgess fine furniture. I say if you've got the right body, flaunt it. <laughs> Don't you? This is my canary yellow. This is... How long have you been off the perch? This is... Uh, <laughs> that's a very good question for you. <laughs> this is especially made by Anthony Squires. Of course, who makes all our things. And it complements the tie given to me last night by the, the Father's Day Council. See? Blue. And that's the symbol. What does that say? Oh, that's the father and the children. Yeah. I worked at... Oh, that's me. And that's Matthew, and that's Lauren. And the day it was taken, Patty was sick. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought you'd come out, I thought you'd say, Bert, you look so handsome and so devilish and so debonair and so beautiful and so... The yellow reflects on your face and you look like you're jaundiced. <laughs> Why do you... No, I think you look terrific in that. Actually, it suits you. You look, you look to me like all you need is one of those hats and you could be a riverboat gambler. That's the way I imagine you. Bert... They call me the moon. Light gambler. No, no, don't hurry, Butsy. Just find the key. I don't know the rest. I don't know the rest. You know the rest. I don't know the rest. I can be our first contestant, darling. I certainly would, Tex. You are looking rather nice, I might. Is that Anthony Squires? Yes. It's very... You look very country squirish, very Rex Harrison. You know what I mean? Mm. Yes. Or more Eliza Doolittle, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I could have had patches put on the elbow and been Robert Young yes. and Father. I love best. that number. Isn't that a nice oh, song? Beautiful. It's my, beautiful. My song. contribution to old people who, yeah. are, who are abused. Yeah, well, well, I mean, well, yeah, well, as you well know. Yeah, well, unfortunately, particularly in this country, unfortunately, you yes. see, because the older people in Australia, we've got a very bad record with not looking after our older people. I'm always very nice to you, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> really, yes, it's, it's, it, that's the one, one of the many things we can learn from the Continentals, how they look after their parents Absolutely. and grandparents. Absolutely, that's true. True. I agree with that. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, our first contestant, Don, that is... Uh, it I'm sorry. It's, it's the donor area, too. Am I? Uh, <laughs> I've got... Uh, I've Who got, showed up? <laughs> I've got Mary Mills from Christabel Crescent in Hawthorne. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mary. Mary. Howdy. Have you been here before? No? Hi, Mary. How are you? Oh, you don't have to be nervous. Look don't at that. Torino the Butcher. He's become a star. Just take it easy, kid. Stick with old Canary Yellow. <laughs> like to join me on the perch? Oh. You've got beautiful hair, like Veronica Lake. Remember Veronica Lake? No. Well, she was a very famous film. I don't either, but Don would remember her. <laughs> very famous film. And she used to have one little piece of hair. You're kidding, I used to go swimming there. Did you? <laughs> Veronica Lake. You know who else has lovely long hair like that? Alison yeah. Durbin, who just Alison sang Alison Durbin, yes. Beautiful mm -hmm. hair. Do you, tell me, come here, come over here, I want to ask you a question. Now tell me the truth. Do you like that suit on him? I like, I like the navy and yellow, but perhaps the other way around. You like the navy and yellow, but perhaps the other way around. I'm going to have a dyed. No, no. <laughs> you mean the blue, the blue with the yeah. yellow yeah. thing? Yeah. Mm. Okay, righto. 
No, I, I, I feel I, so I, ridiculous now, because I'm here for the rest of the whole segment wearing this stupid bloody yellow suit. I don't think, I didn't say it was stupid. Well, you, I, I can tell by your eyes, when one eye goes lazy with you, Don, I know you're not enjoying something. What, is, what do you mean? <laughs> what, what is he talking about? What number do you want, what Mary? Oh, um... Oh. Oh, you, can't have, six. Well, you can't have 14 because that's worn by South Sydney Sport. Oh, I know about for St George. Do you really? Are you you do? Oh, well, I'm nice. Sorry, lost on the wheel. It's lovely to talk to you. <laughs> Where are you from originally? Oh, I'm from Melbourne. But how would you back for St George? Oh, my dad used to play rugby in Sydney and we all got Used to play rugby Sydney. league? Your dad? Yeah. What was his name? But not, I don't think he played with the first. Oh, he didn't play first grade? No, he played for Newtown. Newtown? Oh. oh. Are they yeah. still in it? Oh, I think so. It's what still the? Only teasing. Who do you play on Saturday, by the way? Canterbury, this is the one. This is the one. Yep, I've got a speech to make at the end of the wheel. I don't want you to say a thing. I won't say it, anything. Leave it to me. Sure. And I'm going to be very serious. Sure. What number would you like, uh, Mary? Um, Let I'll me choose one. Me. What were you going to say? Just whisper to me. Hmm, four or six. Just stick with me. I've just got a lucky feeling tonight. You know what I mean? Do you want to or not? Yes or no? Um, You've got a choice. Stick with me or get off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say number nine. I've just got a feeling about number nine. You, you go with his wishes or your own. I just got a message to ring somebody, and there were so many nines in the phone number, I couldn't believe it. And I thought, wouldn't it be funny if somebody on Mary, the wheel does number he, nine? I must, I must tell you, he's going on a hunch. He doesn't mm. know anything. There isn't anything here that's, uh, ah. you know. Um. <laughs> uh, can I keep six? It's my husband's birthday. Of course you can keep six. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it this way, Bert. It's nine upside down. Go ahead, take my six. Move it <laughs> Here, Mary, and I hope it's lucky. Good, Good luck to you. Okay, give it a big I'll spin. bet it comes up big one. I'll bet you it uh. comes up. Up on nine, but that doesn't mean anything. What it does means mean? tonight I've got something going for me, Don. Do oh, you? Yeah? Yes. Both on this side and on the other side. <laughs> yes. I have a lady in the audience Is here. There Mrs. McGlacken's, does McGlacken spiel anything? Yeah, there's, a lady, Mrs. Yeah, there's a lady in the audience here. Can right. you tell me? Close your eyes, sir. Can you tell me and concentrate and tell me what this girl has on her back? She has on her back. Uh, she is wearing a. She's wearing a sweat, a, a leather, a leather, a leather jacket. How about that? A leather, leather jacket. jacket. A leather jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A leather jacket. Yeah, you're right. You're Is there anybody in the audience in this area? Does the name McDonald mean anything? McDonald. I think it might be Mac that lady with the ducks yes. and the sheep and the chickens. Okay, right. Yes. Your three Big Macs are ready for you. And wait. <laughs> I really have got a feeling tonight. Which is a one Yes, exactly. Sorry, Mary, I thought Sorry, you were Mary. Sorry, Mary. You've won a Kimball Your husband's piano. name is John. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you, may, you don't know what you've just done. Tomorrow morning, you'll find him at the tab parlor online with money coming out of his pocket. <laughs> you have been married for four years. Uh, six months. No, uh, but to John, it seems like six <laughs> Piano. Oh, I'll be your father, yes, of course. Isn't that interesting? How would I know his name's John? Uh, you have no children? No. no. You'll bring back the... <laughs> you'll bring back... But I can see something in the future. Yes. You'll bring back maybe twins. Maybe a little John. Yes, if you have two babies at the same time, I guarantee they'll be twins. You'll bring back the good times with this magnificent Kimball home piano. The value is $1,895. Kimball, America's number one piano and organ manufacturer, is available from Paul Hayward Pianos and Organs of High Point, Dandenong, and now at Mount Gravatt in, uh, in Brisbane. Dave, Terry and Kitty are all members of which Australian television family? Sullivan. You got it. Oh, okay, <laughs> good job. Thank you, Mary. Oh, Mary. Oh, Terry. Terry. Oh, yes. Mary. Oh, can I have that one? Could I please? Please let me have that one. Give her a blue one. Let me have the yellow one. It's Mary's Please. Hair. I'll give her the blue one. Well, I give her the red one. one. I want the yellow one. Please. I'm, please don't. Oh, please. Please. <laughs> Wait a minute. See? Look at that. Look how good that looks. Yeah. Like. Trust British paint? Sure can. <laughs> There you go. Nice Thank to meet you, you Mary. Bye -bye. Pleasure, sweetheart. Bye. If okay. you'd like to be on Don's Wheel, I'll tell you soon exactly what you should do. In the meantime, also tonight, <laughs> on, on, whoa, oh. on Don's Wheel, 
<laughs> you have the chance of winning. Some pure new wool carpet. The value is around $1,500. I'll for fix a 12, it. I'll fix your hair. For a 12-square home from Darson. Who cares? Who cares now? Yes. This uh, Bondworth carpet sky. comes from Darson showrooms or shop at home service. And also from Marantz of America, the Trend 30 Hi-Fi music system. Separate cassette deck, tuner, amplifier and speaker, coordinated perfectly in an elegant furniture piece and also the value is around $1,000. And a week for two at the Don Hotel Casino, Darwin. You'll fly first class with TAA, the friendly way. Your exciting week includes a luxury you'll, you'll suite. Even, you'll even get to meet the Don. Breakfast and dinner you get and the total value is $1,700. Good, you must get a big breakfast. $1,700. <laughs> and from your lumber, the oldest family-owned winery in the Barossa Valley, $1,000 in cash plus a dozen bottles of magnificent Yolumba champagne. As the man says, only Yolumba, nothing less. You got it. Who's on the phone yet? Don, our second contestant. Don, on the phone, yeah. Is from uh, Glenorchy in Tassie, Peter Hudson territory. Yeah, Peter Hudson's old team. And it's Marjorie Brown. Hello. Hello. Hi, Marjorie. How are you, Don? I'm very well, thank you, my love. Have you had a nice day? Oh, a lovely day. You've been waiting long for us? Oh, uh, yes, all night. <laughs> all night? All night, yes. But you've been watching the show. Oh, yes. You see us live now. Eh? Well, you, you can see... But I'm sitting there watching you now. You what? I'm sitting here watching you now. You're watching me now? Yes. Yes, hi. That's Bert. Uh, hi, Marjorie. How are you? Yeah, nice to see you. Do you, do you know... Do you follow Peter Hudson? Who? <laughs> he, he does. He doesn't play anymore. No, he doesn't he play anymore now. I'm a Fitzroy's American. You're a Fitzroy Barracker. Hey, Marjorie. Hang on just a minute. I'll let You're you talk. the other one. I'll let you talk to on you, Marjorie. <laughs> and, uh, and if you see Fairy Feet, tell him I said hello. Fairy <laughs> Feet? That's, that's what they call people. Oh, you be say, Come on, Fairy Feet. How are you, Marjorie? Not too bad, Diane. Bird, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. It's good to talk to you. Oh, well, we're Fitzroy supporters, you know. Good. Let's sing the song. We are the boys from old Fitzroy. My lads, we were the Carlos. We're on and blue. How are you? How come you follow Fitzroy? Oh, uh, well, I actually come from North Fitzroy. I know I've been... Whereabouts? I've got no idea. You used to around the corner from our place, Ray Street. Oh, yeah, I lived in Harden Street. Yeah? Just around the corner. What, what number in Ray Street? Uh, uh, 259. Oh, God, I think I know your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in Ray Street. You might be uh, the listen. daughter. <laughs> yeah. I came from, uh, went to the same school as you two, I believe. Well, you shouldn't. It was a boys' school. Oh, uh, you went to St. Bridges, didn't you? No, I didn't go to St. Bridges. I couldn't pass the physical. Uh. <laughs> I went to Our Ladies. Oh, uh, did you? <laughs> yeah, and then I went down to the Morris Brothers. Oh, uh, okay. Where'd you go, St. Bridges, and then where? Uh, where uh, I lived My mum went to St. Bridges. Uh, eh? My mum went to St. Bridget's. Oh, did she? Yeah. She's 80. How old are you? <laughs> How old are you, Marge? Or what age group? Eh? <clears throat> <laughs> Wonderful training by the nuns. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> when anyone asks you a question you can't hear it, say, eh? <laughs> what age group are you in? Big uh -huh. Obviously went to university. 55. Oh, no, will you be a little uh, behind her? Lovely talking to you, Marge. I'll tell you what, I'll send you over something special from Fitzroy. Thank you very much, sir. Would you like that? I'd love it. A blank uh, check. I'll, <laughs> I'll send it over very soon. We're against time, Marge. Lovely talking to you. Oh, thank you very much. God bless. Please. What number do you want, Marge? Nine, Marge. Huh? No, I don't want nine. I want number seven. She don't want nine. She wants number seven. <laughs> this will come up on five. How about the car? Spin five. It. Here we go. Here we go, Marge. Nine. We've already given that prize away, so you get to, to do it again. Do you want to start take, on the same? Take number nine, Marjorie. It's an old Fitzroy girl. It's a Ray Street girl. Stick up for the old club. Take number nine. <laughs> Good. Do you know who wrote that song? Yeah. Bill Steven, the present coach. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. She was singing it. Yeah. Take number nine, Marge, what, please. What I'll... number do you want, Marge? Number seven. Number seven. <laughs> number seven. That's the trouble with Fitzroy. They won't stick together. <laughs> Here we go.
That's not bad. You know, you got a chance of winning a thousand dollars cash. I have. You do. Really? Yes. Oh, lovely. Isn't that nice? Yeah. What are you going to do with it? Oh, uh, put it in the bank for a while. Oh, okay. Hang on just a minute. Here's somebody else who's been in a vault for a while. Here. <laughs> this will be a prize, Marge. Yes, it's lovely, isn't it? Eh? If I get it. Yeah, if you get it. <laughs> it's a sparkling prize. $1,000 cash from Crystal Pool. <laughs> With over, with over 23 years' experience in quality pool building. You can't stop, Marvis. Carry packet. It's trainee audio, man. Uh, with over 23 years' experience in quality... You do whatever you want to do. With over 23 years' experience in quality uh, pool building, you can be sure Crystal can build the pool to suit. Now, you've had experience with Crystal, haven't you? Yes, I got a spa by them. They put it on... They the... are magnificent. Uh, Mr. Pettigrew, just one of nature's gentlemen. Do you have a spa? Yeah, you well, yeah. Put the hot spa and let the thing... Work? Yeah, nice. sure. It's lovely. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Well, you melt about four pounds. Mm -hmm. Well, look at me. Hello. <laughs> In which state of Australia would you find the Derwent River? Tasmania. You got it. Okay. If you'd like to be on right. Don's Wheel, first up is spot 333. Three, 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 one, uh, two. Could I just mention classified air ads? We have a vacancy here for a staging boy. <laughs> <laughs> Around we go. We are against time. Don, just whilst we're selecting our entries, yes. just for a few moments, there's a very important... You're playing Saturday? Yeah, Canterbury Bank's down Saturday, right. and it's for the boys. It's the revival of South let Sydney. Me, let me say it all. Especially to all supporters of South Sydney, I want you to get there to see the game on Saturday. To the boys uh, who are playing for South Sydney on Saturday, of course, you owe it to a lot of people to win this game. This is the big one. No one gave you a chance. But you owe it to nobody more than you owe it to this man here who's worked very hard for you, particularly... Shh! Don, in this year, he's addressed you before the match, during the match, and after the match. And if you don't win on Saturday, he will continue to do this for the next three seconds. <laughs> uh, it's very important, so please try and win it for everybody, but especially for him. More so, I want everybody to come out there. It's, the, it's the, the rebirth of South Sydney, and if you're a South Sydney supporter, you'll be ashamed if you're not out there on Saturday if, to back them up. They've taken you this far. They're only kids, and they've done it all for you, so you, they, owe, they deserve your support. There's one lady up there wearing red and green. Good. <laughs> one and a whole other Also, to all supporters of Fitzroy, I want you to get out there and see Fitzroy and Carlton on Saturday, because it would seem it's the last guy in the Billy Stephen is going to coach Fitzroy too. And we haven't won a Carlton for a long, long time. Okay. So please. Mrs. N. Cook. You owe it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Maria. Oh, yes, dear old Maria of Tarnan Street in West Preston. Zampaglioni. That's either her name or she eats it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she can cook it. There's Mrs. N. Cook of Marine Parade Labrador. Is that right? Labrador, you're on the Gold Coast. Labrador, Gold Coast, Queensland. Good luck on Saturday. I'm um, crossing my fingers and thank you, mate. Up Very much. the rabbit eyes. You got it. Okay. Bird Nude, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back to give away one of these. Thanks for your patience, man. We have a good time. You all forget that you're on camera. Camera goes by and you're going. <laughs> Should be doing. <laughs> nice, you know. Really good. Uh, Monday night, American magician Mark Wilson will return with his family, do some more illusions for us. Acker Bilk, if you're a fan of Acker Bilk, the, uh, with the magic clarinet, he will be here with his band, plus a few other surprises. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, to South Sydney, I will be there Saturday with bells on. Everybody else show up, okay? going to be a good day. Uh, I'd like to leave you with the words of Reno the Butcher, who once said to an attractive girl in his shop, hey, we've got a special today on rump. You show me yours, I'll show you mine. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. I love your face.
John Lane Show is telecast live throughout Australia and is performed in front of a live studio audience. This is Bert Newton speaking.